was our first question, first real question by email after uh, Sam's comment. David says, uh, I joined after freeing my schedule somewhat. I'm looking forward to continue to learn from you and use site to make money. David wanted to know how are options priced around the ex-dividend date? Often the stock price is going to drop reflecting the dividend payout. It can ha be different if there's a, a large market movement pushing the stocks up, but in general you're going to see the stock dip. Um, but he says a synthetic short, which would be buying the put option out in time, maybe a month or so or maybe a week or so after the ex-dividend date and selling a call against it doesn't seem to perfect from the drop. He did it once. You want to know what's going on. How are the market makers adjusting their formula to account for the dividend? Well, the trick is the puts will be increased in price above the calls going into a dividend. And the reason is, is the market makers assume that an investor of the put also owns the stock. Why is that important? Is because they're going to get paid the dividend, so they're inflating the price of the put, so it's essentially a wash if you're in a married put position going through the ex-dividend date. There's no free money. Now, I was mentioned to him I was doing research, but today with several coaching sessions and other concepts, I didn't get the, the list of the full numbers down, but here's essentially what I saw. I'm in Kraft Heinz, KHC as a married put position. Kraft Heinz had an ex-dividend date on 528 or 529, and I think it was 528. But leading up to it, on May 13th, KG is trading at 2876. And I think this expiration, I apologize, let me go back to my notes here. I had it written down in paper, all these different ones. This was the uh, May 29th expiration, the most affected uh, by the dividend coming out on the 28th. But yes, the call is slightly in the money by 76 cents. It had a premium of 138 or 2.2% time premium. Okay, so with the stock at 28.76 here, that 28 call 76 cents in the money with roughly a 138 premium. So we're talking about 60 cents of time premium or 2.2%. Same strike put, same expiration was at 95 cents, 3.3. Okay, so again, what is the difference here of in the money? We're 76 cents in the money, so we're 62 cents of extrinsic value, right? So we're 138 minus 76, so we get ourselves to 62 cents or 2.2%. This is 95, almost a dollar, okay? And that's 3.3% of time value, same strike, same expiration. Naturally, the volatility, the implied volatility is going to look a little bit different because of the extra price. It's based on that price. You know what the dividend is on 528? 40 cents. Kind of right there in line with the bid ask of 95 to 105 with a midpoint of $1. Go up to the next strike, 29. Out of the money here, slightly in the money, the put is at 209 or a 4.6% time premium. The 29 call only has a 3% extrinsic value or time premium. And then again, the 30 strike call slightly out of the money, 46 cents for the call, 1.6% time value. Yes, the put's $1.22 in the money, but it's almost $1.20 in premium or about another 3%. Okay, it's a little bit less. I'm sorry. It's $1.24 uh, in the money. So roughly, it's still $1.20 in premium, which came out to about a 3% time premium. Something's wrong with those two numbers, but that's okay. I uh, might have looked at naked yield. But you see here, I wouldn't quite say they're double, but in some cases, they're much higher. And that's because that $0.40 cent dividend coming up on the 28th is priced in. Going through the rest of the remaining days up to the 27th, the next 14 days are really about 10 trading days, this was identical. The puts were the at the money, slightly in the money, and slightly out of the money puts were around 3%, 4.6% time value, but it, it decayed as you got closer to the expiration, but it was still 40%, 45% higher than its corresponding call because that 40 cent dividend coming up on the 28th was priced into the puts and not the calls. So that's why that short stock of buying the long put and then doing the naked call to create that synthetic short position didn't work out because the premium was priced in to that position. You buying the put, expecting it to go down. What happened on 528 
at the end of day. The call and put prices for the next week out, which also reflected the same disparity where the puts were 40% or so higher than the time value for the calls. At the close of 528, everything the next three cycles out were even. Had just about the same time value, 2% for the 29 call, 2% for the 29 put. That extra premium went away because the dividend was already paid across the ex-dividend date. Okay, so let's pause right now for a moment and I'm going to navigate over to Power Options. Okay, and uh, let me go back to the main home tab there. I know you're not seeing it yet, folks. All right, fantastic. There we go. All right, so here we're just back on our regular trial account there. And as I scroll down into the pods where you can select different pods for market sentiment, watch list, stock gainers today, stock losers today. Oh, there's that NIO position we talked about a couple weeks ago. Um, and ex-dividend today. So we see we had Caterpillar, COP, ConocoPhillips, and uh, what's this one? Uh, Bridge Bancorp. Okay, so I can see more dividend and more dividend announcements here in this pod for X dividend date, but I'm going to click on CAT. Let's take a look. I want to go here. The dividend was claimed today on, I'm sorry, 717. The X dividend date was today. So let's go to the chain. And I'm going to clean this up. It's a little bit too much columns here. We're just going to look at, uh, I'm going to click that add remove columns button. And I just want to see the put option bid, put action ask, call option bid, and option ask. No volume, no open interest, no implied volatility. Don't need it. Well, okay, maybe I'll put in the implied volatility. Let's just leave that there. And I'll take out these as well. Don't need that. Don't need that, that. Okay. And probability, I'm not worried about that right now. We're just going to look at the ask time values, the percent ask time values of both, okay? All right, so why am I doing this? I'm going to clean this up here. Um, good, ask time value, ask time value. Let's submit and save the columns. Doesn't matter the order. So naturally for July 17th, we know that this was most affected. Let's go back. Using the historical chain on the trial, you can go back three months. Let's just go back to the 10th. About a week. Now let's go back to the 9th. All right, Caterpillar was trading at 125.73. So there is a 126 strike. We're going to call that the at the money. For the call, we had an ask time value of 1%. And for the put, at 126 is pretty even. These are really close, actually. It's 1.1% in this case. Um, this one isn't reflecting it as much as other stocks that I've seen. Let's go forward. Oh, that's why. i got to be in the right expiration of July 17th. That makes a lot of sense. Let's stick with the 126. So we have a dividend coming up on July 17th. On the July 17th expiration, the 126 call, pretty much at the money, has a time value of 2.3%. The 126 put is at 2.9%. One strike below, 125, 2.2%. Time value on the call, 27 for the put. Out of the money, 1. 127. 1.9% time value on the call, 2.6 time value for the put. Okay, and what was the dividend payment going to be? It's going to be 103. So it's not necessarily that the price is is increased that much, but right at 126, let's take that value again. Call ask is 293, with 27 cents of that being. Oh no, it's all time value. I apologize. 293 is all time value slightly out of the money. The call, the put, I'm sorry, is about a dollar more at the ask. 27 cents of that is intrinsic value. So it's still 80 to 90 cents higher than the call. Why? Because the dividend of 103 is going to be paid in seven days. If we look at the next day, we'll see the same thing. Okay, the stock moved up, of course. It moved up to 128. Hey, very nice. The 128 strike, 2.1% time value on the call, 2.6 on the put. Not too much movement, but at the 129, 1.7 time value on the call, 2.4 on the put. And that's because that dividend is factored into the put option, so that synthetic short won't work, or if you're in a married put, there's no free money 
as well. Okay, all right. So for David, I don't have, as I mentioned, the full research of all the times, but you can go and take a look at other positions. You can take a look, again, going back to the main homepage there, David, when you have a chance. You can take a look at the X dividends paid today or uh, more updated dividends coming up in the future. And then you can sort of start tracking them day by day to see that the puts have a slightly higher increase than the calls as you lead up to the dividend. And as soon as the dividend hits, for example, let's go back to the cat chain, but let's go to current. And let's look at the one week out on the 24th. Where are we? The 136 call, 1.6%. 136 put, 1.6%. 137 call, 2.2. 2. 137 put, 2.1. They're effectively equal now because the ex-dividend date has crossed. And in a few weeks before the ex-dividend date, that's, I'd say, maybe two to three weeks, but probably closer to two weeks, I'm guessing. That's what I saw in Kraft. I don't know if every stock's like that. But that's when I started to see the influx of the disparity happening between the next three expiration cycles after, if, you, if it offers weeklies, excuse me, David, if it offers weeklies like CAT does, the 17th, the 24th, and the 31st, maybe even August 1st would have seen that disparity. If you only have monthlies, it most likely will only affect that month of expiration that's going to affect the dividend or the ex-dividend date, I should say, the most. Okay, so that's how it's priced in. It's not that the formula is different. It's that the price of the dividend is priced into the put option. Uh, so that it assumes that there's no free money in the short stock position because it's priced in. It's a synthetic short stock, I should say. My apologies. And there's no free money in a married put if you think the stock's going to drop or just buying the put because the dividend is factored into that position.